Hi, I'm going to show you how to make a Cardo map using JavaScript. So in Cardo, you can pretty easily make your own map using the Cardo UI and include that map on a web page using the embed function in Cardo. And that's pretty nice if all you want from your map is um, is what Cardo can provide, and it can provide a lot, so sometimes that makes sense. So when you when you do that, you have a um, when you publish the map, you have an embed code, and what it basically does is it makes an area on your web page that looks exactly like this with the with the blue bar and the zoom buttons where they are and all of your layer styles as they are in Cardo. And sometimes that's totally fine, but sometimes you want the map to be more customized for whatever your uses are. You might not want this blue bar, for example. You might want to add more JavaScript to the map, and you might want more control over the pop-ups and the legends, um, which uh, Cardo lets you customize up to a certain point. So if you need to go beyond that point, uh, this video is for you, and I'm going to talk about building just this simple web page using the map that we looked at over here. Okay, so I'm going to start with a project in Glitch. I'm calling it Cardo Single Layer. And how this works is I would recommend remixing it, which is making your own copy in your own account. And I'll do that now for the purposes of this video. So I'm clicking Remix. <clears throat> and it will take a couple of seconds to copy it over. I know that the project is now remixed because it has a different name. And I'll double check that the preview, so this is a live preview over here, is the one for the new project. If I'm not sure, I'll just close that tab and click on show just to make sure that I'm I'm using the right the right um, preview page because it, it can be frustrating to edit code in your project and not see the changes and the reason is you're just looking in the wrong place for those changes. Okay. So, um I'm going to start by looking at the index, the HTML file, and most of this is standard HTML that you've likely seen at some point before. You need to add three lines to this, to like your standard index, okay, let's call it four lines, to your standard index in order to get going with a Cardo map in your web page. So from the top, the first one that I'll add is this CSS. This CSS comes from a project called Leaflet. Leaflet is actually what shows you this map on the screen. So it, it does all of the work of adding these zoom buttons and adding the base tiles and the data on top. So Leaflet has some CSS code. If I... Um, if I look down below, on here we have lines 18 and 19. Why don't I make these a little larger so you can see a little better. Um, lines 18 and 19. The first one is the leaflet JavaScript code. So that's actually, you need both the CSS and the JavaScript. And you also need the cardo.js code. Cardo.js is going to help you get the map data out of Cardo and put it on top of your map. 
So you need these three lines no matter what, the leaflet CSS, the leaflet JavaScript, the Cardo JavaScript. Those are standard. Um, you're going to, need, going to need that every time. The other thing you'll need to add is a place for your map to go. Right here. This is line 15 in this code file. Um, the place where you'll put the map has to be a div. And I'm going to give it an ID of map. Okay, so you need a div with an ID of map. <clears throat> Before I look at the JavaScript, I'm going to look at my CSS. So I'll look at styles.css. There's not much going on here. Um, I'm reducing the margin and padding on the body. So if you look at the preview, you see that there is no margin or padding. Everything goes all the way to the edge of the screen. You don't have to do that. For example, um, I could comment out this whole section. And you should see, yeah, so there's a little bit of white space here. We also have some scroll bars, which is maybe not ideal. Um, you, I'll get rid of those and we'll see in our preview, should be back to normal, yep. And the element with ID of map, which in CSS is pound sign map, I'm positioning absolutely, I'm giving it a height and width of 100%. So it's taking up the full body of the page. The body and the map are exactly the same size. If I had other content on the page, I might want to set the height to some number of pixels, like this. So I have 500 pixels, and then in the index, maybe I put something under the map. Here's some text explaining the map. Okay, that didn't quite work, and that is because I'm positioning absolutely here. So you can take that out. Position absolute makes it always appear up at the top uh, in this case. But this is a fairly common use case. You might want a big map and then some text under it, or to the side, or um, above it and you can play around with that a bit here. So I could also put some text above the map here. Here's some introductory text. Okay. So if I look back at my page, you can see how you would start to build a page around um, a map that we're creating in JavaScript, right? Okay, so I'm going to get rid of those for now. I like having my map take up the whole screen for this exercise at least. So got everything back to the way it was, um, except for the CSS. So let's go back to the CSS and I will uncomment this code and make this 100% again. All right, so now my map's taking up the whole screen again. Um, now let's look at the JavaScript. So there's a lot going on in the JavaScript. You'll see here that it is 32 lines. Many of these lines are either uh, blank or they're comments. I'm, I tried to document this a bit so you can better, so you can read through it on your own. Um, but I'm going to go through this line by line, and we will um, we'll talk about each line so that in the future, if you have to customize any of this, you can do that. So these first two lines, this isn't necessary, but it keeps the editor from thinking L and Cardo are typos. What do I mean? Okay, so this line here, the global L Cardo, uh, this tells Glitch that 
when you see the letter L, capital L, like here and here, um, it's it already exists somewhere. It's global. It's loaded by that JavaScript in the index, actually. So why don't I delete this just to show you what happens if it's not there? You see, we get a bunch of errors here. These are errors that um, Glitch thinks L is not defined. L Glitch thinks Cardo is not defined. Um, but the page still works because those things are defined. Glitch just doesn't know about them. So I'm going to keep that line there because I don't like to see errors that aren't actually errors. Okay, so that's lines one and two. If we look at line four, see var map is equal to, is set equal to l dot map, map dot set view, and then some coordinates and a zoom level. So this is creating a leaflet map in the div with id map. And it's setting the view on that map to the center and the zoom that you set there. Okay, So for example, um, we could have it zoom in a little bit more. Look at it as it is now. If we zoom in to zoom level 6, and look at the preview, you'll see that it is zoomed in a bit. It's still centered in the same place, so we are over Morocco. That's probably not what we want for this, since the data is over on the east coast of the US, mostly. Um, so maybe we want to change the center point. Maybe we want it to look more like this. That seems that seems to make sense to me. So, um, so what you might want to do is find a better center point, and then zoom into that. And um, why don't we look at a quick way to do that? So you could just guess. Um, Thirty in this case is the latitude. Zero is the longitude. You could keep changing the longitude until it inches over to the west. But if you want to do this a little more quickly, what I would recommend is using a site such as Bbox Finder. Bbox Finder shows you down here in the bottom, shows you the current center point of the map. So if I, as I move the center, the center being this bullseye, um, and you can switch the latitude and longitude here because leaflet, I think leaflet wants, yeah, leaflet wants latitude then longitude. So we'll use latitude, longitude. And I know that the center point is something like this. So I'll come over here and copy this center point and put that in my code. So that's this right here. And let's look. OK, it looks centered in the way we want now. Um, I can zoom in a bit more now. Let's try 6 to start. That's maybe a little too far. Let's try 5. OK, that looks better. Um, maybe not ideal. Maybe you want it a little bit further north. You could play around with with that a bit, um, but for now, that's all I want to say about um, line four. That's line four. Okay, so lines seven through nine. We're asking leaflet, that's L here, to create a tile layer. This is the base layer, the base map for our map, and. You create a tile layer by specifying a URL. In this case, the URL is a map over at Cardo. I can tell this because it's talking about Cardo here in the URL. And if you go back to Cardo and look under their base maps, look at the change the source to Cardo, you'll see that there's Voyager, there's Positron. We could change it to Positron. 
Um, if you hover over these, you can see the different styles that are available. So for example, maybe we want dark matter. I'm not actually totally sure what the URL is for dark matter, but I can make a guess. So you can see where Voyager is. I could try dark matter like that. OK, that didn't work. Maybe it's dark matter. So if you wanted to change the base layer to another base layer, all you need to do is change this URL here. Okay. So in this case, we're using Voyager with no labels. Um, that's what this looks like. Um, if you look at Cardo and look under Sources, you can see they have a few others, including Dark Matter. Um, I looked at the page itself to find the URL for these tiles. In this case, it's dark all, like that, and you'll get the this is our page. So all we had to change in the URL was this here to add another Cardo base layer. If you wanted a base layer, say, that you created in Mapbox, you can load the style, go to the share, develop, and use page for that style, and scroll down to develop with this style and leaflet, and copy that URL. So I'll copy that URL into here and paste it. It's really long because it has an access token in it, but you'll see that now our map is using my Mapbox style. OK, I'm going to undo that and get rid of the long text in our file. But you can see um, <clears throat> that's pretty much all that's happening. So it's creating the tile layer, and it's adding it to the map. So the reason we say var map back on line 4 is so that we can refer to the map later on in our code. And we do that a few times. So that's lines 7 through 9. Lines 12 through 15, we're initializing Cardo. So we're saying we're creating a client. That client needs to know our username and our API key. I have found that you do not need the API key as long as your data sets are either public with a link or just public. So uh, so I'm just going to use the word API key here. If you needed an actual API key, you would get that from your Cardo account. I'm not going to show that here. So you're just always going to do this early on in your code file. So you can pretty much copy and paste this and change this uh, word to your username. My username is Brelsfo again. Okay, that's lines 12 through 15. Line 18, we're creating a new data set. We're asking Cardo, see we're using the word Cardo here, for a source that is a data set. And that data set's name, it's kind of a mouthful, HMS, EFH, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm getting that from my Cardo account. So if you look at your Cardo account, I'll go back to my dashboard and open up the data sets. And you'll see that is the name of this data set. So I'm going to go in here and just copy and paste this. Okay, And that should do it. So that's the data set. You can do more complicated things with this if you're doing um, an SQL later. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video. We're just going through the basics of getting up and running with Cardo.js. Lines 21 through 25. Here we're creating a style for our data. 
this should look familiar. This is Cardo CSS. So we're saying we're setting the CSS into a variable called style. We're putting it in a variable because we'll use it later. And we're saying, hey, Cardo, create a new style that is a Cardo CSS style. And then in quotes here, these are different quotes than you might be used to using. These are back ticks. Um, then we just put whatever Cardo CSS we want. We'll use the pound sign layer for the selector, and then in the curly braces, whatever you want. Um, we could say change the polygon fill to green. And when I look over at my preview, you see that the polygons are indeed green. You could add a line color white. And now we have a line color, and it is white. You can do any Cardo CSS you want here, including conditionals. Um, so for example, we have all of the polygons styled green right now. I have the data open here. I could say if the life stage is adult, make it a different color. So I could say create a conditional Cardo CSS style and say life stage equals adult polygon fill. Oh, let's just make it visible. So I'm not I'm not thinking too much about the styles here. I just want to make sure that it works. So you can see, okay, this is not great for colorblind people or um, anything like that, but you can see that it's working. Maybe, maybe it would look better if it was um, blue or something like that, which might not be much better. But you can see that I can do whatever Cardo CSS I need to in this file. So what I would most likely do, what I would probably recommend, is start in Cardo, do all of your styles in Cardo here, create a map with it, and then copy and paste your Cardo CSS over. Um, that tends to be a little bit quicker than doing it all in code. But that is, and I'll get rid of the things that I just added and go back to the state we were in before. If you, you can see it is how it was. So that's lines 21 through 25. Created a style. Now, we're using the things, the variables that we created earlier. We created source, and then we created style. We're going to put those together with Cardo and create a layer. So a layer needs both the source, which is where the data is coming from, and the style. Puts the, sort, the data and the style together, and it makes a layer. That's line 28. Then lines 31 and 32, we're asking the client to add a layer, the layer that we created just a minute ago. And then we're getting the leaflet layer. We're adding that to the map. So this is a little confusing, um, but what we're doing is we're saying, uh, we're asking Cardo to create a layer that will work on a leaflet map. So we're saying, get, see all those layers that you have, Cardo? Give me one that will work with leaflet, and then add it to the map, OK? And again, the word map, this is a variable. It's the same one that we created up in line four. And that um, it's, you always want to refer to the, the same map um, as you're going through this code. If I say, um, use the different word here, like my map, first of all, um, you'll see that there's an error because it says my map is not defined. I know where above said var my map. But if I look at the output, I now have nothing on my map except for the base map. And that's because my map doesn't exist, right? It's called map, 
so I want map there. If I wanted it to be my map, I would want to change it everywhere it appears here. So I'll change it there and I'll see where the errors are and I'll fix all those errors by changing the name to my map. And I'll go back. If that works fine. I prefer short and to the point with variable names when possible. Map is perfectly good for that. If you had multiple maps on a page, which you can absolutely do, I would use more descriptive names. So instead of map, I might say tiger shark, ma tiger shark map so that it was clear that um, this is the map I'm talking about and I can look at the code and it, that makes sense to me. But if I'm only working with one map, there's only one map. I don't need to think um, too, too hard about that. Um, and I just want to reiterate the word map in here is different. That is the ID of the div, the div that creates the map here. So if I go back to the index and if I changed the div ID to my map, nothing is going to show up in my output because there is no div going back to the JavaScript called just map. So if I wanted to change the ID, I would change it to my map here also, and then it should work. Okay, so if things are not working, you'll want to open up the developer tools. I'm in Firefox right now, so this might look different from what you're used to. If you're used to, um, if you're used to Chrome or something else, and I'll look in the console, and there are no errors right now. Um, what else might be going on? So I'll, I'll look at the elements, and I'll look at my map, the div that should be holding my map. And you'll see here, see that um, the dimensions are 1215 by 0. That means the height is 0. And looking over here in the styles, you'll see that it doesn't have the height and width set as I set the CSS before. And that's because the CSS selector is just using map. If I change that to my map, aha, it works. I'll change that back though. Let's stick with just map. Again, if you had multiple maps, you'll probably want different IDs. You can only have one thing called map in your HTML. Um, so if you have multiple, you'll probably want to be more descriptive than just the word map. And while we're here, I'll look at um, the developer console just for one more moment. So um, it can be helpful to have developer tools open to the console while you're developing. The reason that is, is if there are any errors that come up, um, they will appear here. So why don't I add an error? I'll change um, this variable name to my map. Like I said before, I would usually need to change that everywhere else, but I'm, in I'm intentionally creating an error here. Uh, so now when I go back to my page, you'll see that it kind of looks like a map. It has the zoom buttons and it's gray here. But if you look in the console, there's an error. In this case, the error maybe isn't the most useful error. Um, t.addLayer is not a function, but it will at least tell you that there is some kind of error. In this case, it's because of the naming. The browser isn't quite smart enough to realize that it's just a name that's mixed up. But, but I definitely recommend that you have the console open, especially if you're having issues um, getting your map to work as expected. Okay, so again, just quick, quick recap. 
If you're making a map in Cardo using JavaScript, I recommend starting from a template. I have a number of templates in my Glitch account. I'll link to that in the description. Um, but you'll start in the HTML. You'll add the leaflet CSS up in the head. You'll add the leaflet and Cardo JavaScript in the body. Um, I didn't mention this before, but you'll want it to come before your JavaScript. You need it to come before your JavaScript, otherwise um, your JavaScript will be trying to use leaflet, but it won't be there, or it'll try to use Cardo and it won't be there. You'll create a div with an ID. Usually that ID will just be the word map. And in your CSS, you want to make sure that your map has dimensions of some sort. In this case, I'm making it positioned absolute with 100% height and width. Depending on your page structure, you might want to tweak those. That is, that is up to you. But make sure that map has dimensions. If it doesn't have dimensions, it will look like it's not working, and it's really just not visible. Going back through the JavaScript, really briefly, I'm creating a leaflet map. I'm adding a base layer to that leaflet map. I'm initializing Cardo and letting Cardo know my username. I'm creating a layer. All these lines, all they do is create a layer. And a layer is going to be a data source plus a style. Once I have that layer, I put it together and add it to the client. Once I have that, I add um, that leaflet layer from the client to the map. So um, so I think that's enough for, for this for this uh, video. Again, I'll link to the this example project. Uh, please do play around with um, with modifying it and and work through how how this code works. And I hope it's been useful for you.